Hi, Henry here. Uh, today we're going to make a simple space frame uh, that we're going to build as a kind of component system and deploy along a, uh, a surface. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make that surface. Uh, so I'm going to just make a plane in Rhino. Uh, make it about 100 feet by 100 feet. And I'm going to rebuild it. Some more control points, turn its points on, raise them up, maybe 40 feet, something like that. Hello, there we go. Um, and I'm going to get a surface parameter and reference in that surface. We'll call this our uh, control surface. Now, uh, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be building the component that we're going to deploy and we're going to use uh, a, a box morph to do that. And what the box morph basically does is it, it uh, takes some geometry and takes a reference box and then takes a whole set of other uh, target boxes and copies the geometry from the original reference box into the target boxes, but it will also morph it to account for sizes in the different boxes. So this will become clear as we do it. Um, but the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need uh, to build our, um, our component and we're going to build it inside of the box that we're going to use as um, as the reference geometry. So the easiest way to do that is we're going to make a box and we're going to make it using a domain uh, or a set of domains. Ultimately, um, and we'll just create the box here at 000. zero, zero. Um, it doesn't matter what size this box is because the final uh, uh, set of components are going to be deformed according to a new set of boxes. That, that'll be clear. Um, That'll be clear as we do it. So these require an X, Y, and Z domain, and let's just hard code it to be uh, negative 50 to 50. One, two, three. Um, and let's get a, uh, let's get a box, and we'll call this, our reference box. Now we're also going to use the reference box to um, set up our geometry. And there's a really good um, there's a really good component which will basically allow you to define to define a series of points uh, in in that box. Um, and it's called evaluate box. So here's our reference box. Sometimes what I like to do, because I'm going to end up copying this over and over, is change the wire display to be hidden. Right, so you see when I click on it, it reconnects to its source, but when I don't, uh, it just kind of floats. And then this will, is, is basically a set of coordinates inside uh, the, the box, which is treated, if you treat that as point zero, 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 that is point one, one, zero, one, one, one you'll see that we can um, that we can use a, a, a slider to uh, define a set of points. And actually, here's a trick. So I, I think what, what I'm going to end up wanting to do is mostly connect to midpoints or endpoints. I'm going to double click on the slider and set the number of digits down to 2. All right, so now you can see instead of 0 0.500, it's 0.5, right? And so now I only get two digits, which is going to make it a little bit easier to control. So we have one for X, or U, V, and W, which are kind of local coordinate system set up inside of the box, right? And so if I set those all to be... Uh, Sometimes it's a little bit easier to control things when you make your sliders a little bit longer. 
if I set those all to be um, 0.5, there we go. Then this is, is, that's basically my box midpoint. So if I set these to be zero, 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 right, I get that corner. Uh, and what I might want to do now um, is set up a line from my midpoint to that corner. Turn the preview off here. Um, and if I copy this down, right? Um, so maybe what I want to do is set up a line from all of the corner points to that midpoint. So my W is going to be the same for all of these. All right, I'm just going to change my, um, my U and V. So there we go, that's that corner. That corner. that corner, right? So I've got all four corners. Um, maybe I want to send them, let's send them to one curve parameter. Um, and if I want, I could copy this whole thing down and now because I set up one W parameter here, right, that, that gives me my top corners. Um, so let's do one um, let's do one more uh, line. Let's do uh, a line that goes to the midpoint from the midpoint of, of this face. So let's set that down to 0.5 and this guy to 0.5 and let's assume that Right, that, that that now we have one slider that controls uh, you know where we're connecting here. And let's move this across to the other side. Right? So now we've got a line going through the middle. So we have lines going from all four corners and lines going from the midpoint of those two boxes. Right. And let's say these can form the center line of our space frame component. Right. And if I get uh, another curve parameter, right, and let's call this center lines. Okay. So what I need now is I need a way of deploying these center lines on this surface. So here's, here's my control surface. So over here in transform, under morph, there is uh, a component called uh, box morph. Box morph takes reference geometry and a reference box. So here's my reference geometry. And just to make life easier, um, because I want to deploy all of those uh, 10 lines, um, into every new box. I'm going to group them. Uh, let's forget where group is. So I'm going to double click and just type group. 
There we go. Group is set of objects. Um, so now I have, let me get a parameter for that group. Um, that's my reference geometry, right? Um, here's my reference box. I can copy this. And now all I need is I need a series of uh, target boxes. So just to show you how this works, right? I can make one, right? Right here is you can make a box from two points. Draw a point, draw another point, move that point up. Let's say set point and set point, right? Now I get a box that's controlled by those two points. If I use that as my target box, right? You can see what's happening, right? It's using this geometry and translating from the coordinate system defined by this box to the coordinate system defined by that box. I make this really long, that gets really long, right? I make it really tall, it gets really tall. Um, so what we want is we want to do a set of boxes along that surface. Um, and so that, um, there's a component that exists uh, that is, where is it? It's called um, uh, surface box. And surface box takes a surface um, and it takes a, a, a domain. And so what we need to do now is we need to, uh, you know, because the surface has, has its own domain in, in U and V from zero to one in U and zero to one in V, we need to chop up that domain, those domains into a series of, of subdomains. So here under um, math, we can construct a domain, a two dimensional domain from four numbers. Right, and the default values are zero to one in U, zero to one in V. And then what we wanna do is we want to divide a two dimensional domain into equal segments. So here's our domain that we wanna divide, and this is the number of segments. So let's get uh, a slider, double click on it, set it up for numbers, say zero to 50. Let's make it a minimum of two, two to 50. All right, and so you can see the output of that is two domains, zero to one and zero to one. And the output of this is four domains because we're dividing it by two or more domains. So if we plug that into D, um, and we, um, this is my control surface, yes. We remember to reparameterize our surface. You can see what's happening now, right? It's dividing up our surface. Now what we, the last thing we need is we need to give each of those boxes a height. Since the surface is only two dimensional, it's, you can iron it out into a sheet of paper First, it's dividing it up into a series of boxes, and now it needs to give the, those boxes a height. And so let's let that height be somewhere between zero and, I don't know, 120. So when I do this, you can see what happens, right? It thickens up that surface into what are called a series of twisted boxes. And if we use those boxes now as our target geometry, and I turn off our surface, you can see that what's happening is that the lines inside here are being copied, just like they were copied before, into a series of boxes along that surface. And we have basically the, the skeleton of a space frame. And we can still control everything parametrically, right? We can control the underlying surface if we want. Oops. Point 
Amazon. Um, we can control the number of divisions. And we can also still control our, um, our initial reference geometry. So for example, right here, we set the midpoint to be right in the center. We could change that. Drop it down. See, can you see that? Right. When we drop that down, you can see, um, you can see how that changes the um, space frame here. Let's skew it this way. Right. And because these are now a series of lines, um, it's actually the output that you get is a series of groups, right? If we ungroup it, you now have lists of curves, actually lists of lists of curves, um, which you could pipe. Well, like a radi little bigger radius, let's say. Could bake that geometry. It's a little bit fat. Yeah, and there, there you have it.